I'm 13 Disciple, and in this video we're going to cover the problem of special ammunition, uh, why some of the proposed solutions don't fix it, and uh, how I would go about uh, solving this problem. So anyways, um, Steven, punch the title. Oh, that, I don't have an editor named Steven, never mind. Um, anyways, me, punch the title. Okay, so I don't think very many people actually understand what the problem is with special ammunition. So the difference between a standard and a special ammo, right, apart from the shell characteristics, is that one simply has better penetration than the other. Thus, you'll penetrate more rounds than you normally would with standard rounds, right? And the only trade-off being is that they cost substantially more than standard ammunition. So since standard ammunition is balanced by its cost, that gives an uh, indirect advantage to those players that have premium tanks and or premium accounts. Premium account time and premium tanks are mostly purchased with real money. So that means your free to play player must either avoid the use of premium shells or grind more credits than players that are paying for these features. So there is uh, an in-battle advantage that is balanced by the game economy, which is directly influenced by real money content. To put it simply, um, special ammunition in its current state is indirectly a pay for advantage mechanic. So pretty much every complaint about gold rounds, gold spam, premium spam, whatever you want to call it, fundamentally stems from uh, that basic problem. Operating a free-to-play game with pay-for-advantage mechanics will thin out your player base. Your free-to-play players will feel like they can't play the game on a level playing field, and they can't afford to level the playing field out, so they will just move on. Your server population will suffer, and then one day down the road, when those players you know, get a gift or, or you know, have a little extra income, they won't be there to spend it on the game, so you lose uh, potential income down the road too. So the key to uh, fixing premium ammunition is removing cost as the balancing factor in the shell type. So just as a quick side note, I'm what most players would call a whale, okay? I log into my account sometimes simply to literally Scrooge McDuck swim my way through all of the wealth I have in this game, okay? I am the pay for advantage player, all right? The thing is, is, I want to see the, the playing field leveled, okay? I want newer players or even experienced players to all have a level playing field, right? I don't want that advantage. I don't need that advantage. So one of the most often suggested solutions I've seen so far is that we should limit the number of special ammunition shells each tank in the game can carry. And to start with, I just don't think it's possible to even balance that across every tank in the game. I kind of go into more detail about why that would be uh, in my written article. But basically, to, to summarize this one, is that the devs have already address this and they just don't consider it an option moving forward. You would also end up changing the meta towards tank destroyers that have high penetration, super heavy tanks which have a lot of armor, and uh, HE tanks which don't really rely on either. You'll also be limiting player choice in game both by which ammunition is appropriate for a given situation and which vehicles are even viable to play. And fundamentally, you're just not fixing the original problem, right? You're only addressing this by simply lowering the grind for credits for both free-to-play players and paying players. You haven't fixed the fact that special ammunition is balanced by its cost. So another suggestion I've seen is that we should limit Matchmaker to a one or two tier spread. And I get why people feel that way. It's because they're driving a low tier tank and they literally have no tools in their toolbox to deal with high tier armor. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in my side of the solution. Basically, it lowers the variety of tanks you'll see in a match. Eventually, you'll just see an increase in queue times and it still, yet again, doesn't address the core problem, which is that special ammunition is balanced by its cost. 
So let's talk about the current iteration of the sandbox server. So what Wargaming has done is they've raised the alpha damage of your standard shell and then raised the hit points of every single tank in the game to compensate for that. What we've seen though is that the hit point increase was not the same as the alpha increase. So for higher tiers, 7, 8, 9, 10, time to kill is actually a, a lot lower than it should be. So that's the first problem. The second problem is we still have to take into account that plus or minus 25% RNG on higher numbers makes the RNG range a lot wider. There's a little more math detail in the written article. Another issue is that you'd probably have to throw out all previous statistics, which you know isn't really a bad thing, it's just something to note. And then the big problem is that it still hasn't changed the cost of special ammunition. So essentially, whether they raise the alpha of standard shells or if they lower the alpha of special shells, if they don't change the cost of the special shell, simply put, what they've done is they forced every single person playing the game to fire more special shells than they previously used to, which actually makes the problem worse, not better. So I can understand where they're coming from, but if they don't change the cost while they make these other changes, then they're exacerbating the issue, not fixing it. Okay, so we've defined the problem. We've looked at solutions that by themselves don't fix the problem. So I guess it's time for my solution for special ammunition. So hopefully by the end of this, my suggested changes will address two main goals. The first of which is remove the cost as a balancing factor in special ammunition. And second is to make ammunition selection meaningful and rewarding. So let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the ammunition change. If you go in and you just change the cost of special ammunition to be the same as standard ammunition, then you've made them redundant and you've created a one dimensional mechanic. That's not gonna work. You still have to make the two shells differentiate from each other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna say, let's just remove all the shells as they are and we'll create three new shells kind of based on those. We're gonna start with our standard round, which will have an average alpha and an average penetration. And that should have a shell characteristic of either AP, APCR, or heat. The second round will be a high penetration round, which will be 15 to 25% less uh, alpha damage, a high penetration. That should also have a characteristic of AP, APCR, or heat. And then the third round should be your low penetration round. So this will have a 20 to 30% higher alpha damage, low penetration, capable of splash damage, and this shell should have a characteristic of either HE or HESH. So the essential part of this, we bring down the cost of the special ammunition or my version is high penetration round, and then we bring up the cost of the other two rounds to kind of make them all flat. The cost of the shell should never be part of your decision on which shell ammunition to use. One key aspect of this is that it doesn't need to change the economy of the game. So your other two rounds come up in cost, and you could also fiddle with the repair cost of a vehicle, but basically you can maintain the same economy and enable the developers themselves to adjust and tune the credit drain that they have at tiers eight, nine, and 10, really without sacrificing game balance here. We've made each shell a choice and we've differentiated between all three of them and we've made them all, relatively speaking, the same cost. When you're in a match, there's never a question of, should I change to the shell type even though it costs more? So first we're going to start by kind of categorizing armor with its defensive capabilities against weapons of its own tier. First off, you've got your paper armor, which is armor so thin that it has above a 90% chance of HE penetration. Next, you've got your light armor, which is armor that will block about 90% of HE shells, but above an 80% chance of a hash or hep penetration. And then you have your standard armor, which is basically 
Armor that blocks uh, penetrations from pretty much every HE round. However, standard rounds will still penetrate more than 90% of the time. Then you have your moderate armor, which is armor that will block about 30 to 70% of standard ammo, depending on its penetration value, but will be penetrated by more than 90% of your uh, high penetration ammunition. So here we've got around a 50-50 for standard shells and then around a, a really high percent for high pen ammo. Then you have your good armor, which is armor that will block about 90% of standard ammo, but will be penetrated by 30 to 70% of high penetration rounds. And then you have your strong armor, which is armor that will block pretty much everything except around 10% of your high pen rounds. And then your last category is your impenetrable armor, which is just armor that strictly cannot be penetrated by any rounds of that same tier. So my plan is to take every single tank model and kind of look at it through this scope of what is my kind of armor value at the same tier and then adjust it from there. So if we look at a Carnivon, the tier eight British heavy tank, you'll see I've converted its armor profile of same tier into my sort of designated system here. So you can kind of see how these armor values are against vehicles of its same tier. Most vehicles will depend its lower plate with standard ammunition, and then any vehicle of its same tier will have a reasonably good chance, but they could switch to a high pen round and, and kind of guarantee that penetration at a loss of, of alpha damage. And then you have the turret, which is extremely strong with a relatively low chance of high pen uh, rounds getting through. But then you also have kind of like this little weak spot on the top, the cupola there, which is a, a really high pen for your standard round. As a fellow tier eight coming against this vehicle here, if I think that I can hit the lower plate or the, uh, the weak spot on the turret there, then I can do a little bit more damage. Or if I don't believe in my accuracy, I could also switch to a high penetration round, take a hit on the potential alpha damage I could be dealing in order to do more safe damage to the uh, upper plate plate there. So the idea is that you kind of take this armor profile and let's say we look at this armor profile from a tier higher. So if we look at the same armor profile from a tier 10 gun, we'll see that there's a lot more opportunity for penetration here and it's kind of defensive capabilities drop considerably. And then the tier 9 gun will probably be a profile that's somewhere in between the tier 8 and tier 10 gun here. So if we move on from here, you'll compare it to the tier 6 gun. And you'll see the tier six gun kind of bumps everything up a level. So now you have a real struggle to penetrate that upper plate, pretty much got zero chance to get through that turret. So the idea is that the tier seven then kind of fits somewhere in between your tier six armor profile and your same tier armor profile. Now remember, these are all from perpendicular angles. So you're able to take a vehicle and through skill, you can angle that armor in such a way that you improve the armor profile of the vehicle you're driving from the perspective of another tier eight tank, but that upper plate has gone from yellow to orange. So let's go back to that moment where we talk about a tier eight player in a tier 10 room who really doesn't have any tools in his toolbox to deal with a high armor tier 10 tank. So if we go all the way back to the release of the Swedish tech tree, right after that, you'll see this big massive trend of war gaming, basically just buffing armor like crazy. So you have the release of the Defender, which has an insane armor profile for tier eight. You'll see the mouse got buffed armor, the type five, type four got buffed armor. And then we saw the Chrysler, which had a controversial release to say the least, but that also has no frontal weak spots. You have the 268 V4, the object 430U. I mean, the list is pretty long. Um, but the whole point of it is that Wargaming understands this relationship between real money content and this credit drain of premium ammunition. By increasing the amount of armor in the game, they force the player base to use more premium ammunition, which creates a more severe credit drain, which encourages more sales of premium time and premium tanks. We do know that this is not healthy for the game, We've seen a pretty big drop in server population, or at least active users, ever since that trend sort of started. So the reason why I bring all this back up is because if we are addressing the main problem of premium rounds, which is their cost, perhaps Wargaming might be more apt to go back through and adjust these armor models to make them more appropriate for their tier 
and make them better for the game health as a whole. Now the hope is that Wargaming will look at every armor model starting at tier 10 and then work their way down, adjusting the armor to a profile that makes sense for its own tier. The hope is that they'll allow weak spots in the armor, which I think makes the game a lot more fun and dynamic. So let's theoretically say that Wargaming is willing to make some weak spots in their armor profiles. So let's take a look at the Type 5 in my armor system as a same tier, tier 10 gun, uh, but without any weak spots, so as it is in the game. So I know this armor layout here isn't perfect, but pretty much you do have a driver's hatch there, which has a relatively low chance for a standard round penetration from a same tier gun, but a relatively high chance as long as you switch to a high penetration round, but that creates the entire tank kind of has that relatively high chance for a high penetration round here. So my thought was is that we could reduce that driver's hatch down to something a little more reasonable. So if we drop that driver's hatch down to kind of a green armor situation from that same tier tier 10 gun, what you'll have is a choice to make in the game. So if I'm approaching a type five, I can then look at my ammunition and gun and say, do I think I can hit this weak spot with standard ammunition in order to do a little bit more damage, a little bit higher DPM and be rewarded for knowing where that weak spot is and that I can penetrate it? Or do I go back to my high penetration round do a little less damage and a little lower DPM in order to have a larger target to shoot at and penetrate maybe 30 to 70 percent of the time so there's that trade-off there and there's a decision that the player gets to make you're enabling them to make a choice but the whole thing about this is let's go back to that tier 8 gun now the tier 8 can look at this tier 10 heavy and it can say oh I actually have an opportunity to do something here. There is something in my toolbox that I can deal with this. So I can switch to my high penetration ammunition. I can aim for this little tiny weak spot on the front of the tank. And if I hit it, there's a reasonable chance that it'll penetrate. So the tier 10 feels like they are heavily armored because literally that tank can't pen them anywhere except that little spot. And when that little tier 8 does finally pen it, it's doing it at a disadvantage with lower alpha and lower DPM. Pretty much everybody's kind of happy in this scenario. The tier 8 has something it can actually do. Your tier 10 is given options on how it can engage the enemy. And as the heavily armored tank you are, you feel good knowing that you are forcing other players to make choices with the way that you're driving and angling your armor. So the beauty of my solution here is that you can actually make these ammunition changes without doing any of the actual armor changes in the game either. The idea is that you can start with the ammunition and you can rework armor models as you need to. You would start at tier 10 with your armor models and then work your way against the next tier. So I would look at every tier 10 against the same tier 10 gun and then look at that same tier 10 from a tier 9 gun and then look at that same tier 10 from a tier 8 gun and now you build a profile that's more balanced against those three different tiers. And then of course you've got your, you know, you could put a tier 7 gun on a tier 5 tank or you can put, you know, tier 9 armor on a tier 7 or what have you. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, balancing that can that can happen in the game but the idea is that armor and guns should be balanced against their same tier counterparts uh, so that you can kind of get this level uh, between each of the different tiers to make everything kind of a little more fair and interesting so pretty much the bottom line is that this whole system would give players a lot more options and ammunition choice it'll reward players with really deep knowledge of armor layouts and it also gives everybody kind of like a general template of armor values when they go and look at tank balance. Pretty much that's the whole idea on how this new ammunition system works with kind of a revamp of how the armor scenario is, is looking here. Okay, you're right. Yeah, what about tanks with high HP pools and strong armor? I was lying. You can't make this change without at least addressing some of the outliers like the mouse like the Type 5. These are tanks that boast both crazy strong armor and really high HP pools. So what you're gonna have to do is you're either gonna have to adjust the armor model or just adjust the, uh, the hit points there so that you bring their time to kill back into balance with what they were with the previous premium rounds. 
All right, we've made it this far. Um, so, so far we've adjusted so that we are no longer balancing this high penetration round against its cost. So we've successfully finished our first goal of this uh, solution and we've partially addressed the second goal of the solution, which was to make ammunition selection more meaningful. So let's get into that a little bit here. Okay, so if we start by looking at our ammunition as it is today, you'll see your AP, your APCR, your heat, your uh, HE hash hap rounds here. Okay, and they all have very specific characteristics about them. Plan is to try and accentuate the differences between them so that you have another characteristic to consider when you're selecting which ammunition to use in a given scenario. What we're seeing is that the AP and the APCR round are very, very similar in the way they work. My hope would be to kind of differentiate them a little bit more. So I kind of see the AP round as this really solid moving slug with reasonable speed that punches through defenses up to like a moderate armor. So what I'm seeing from this round is good velocity, a reasonable amount of penetration, good normalization and good alpha damage. So to kind of accentuate the AP round roll, I would improve its normalization to something maybe more like seven degrees. That might be a bit much, but again, this would take a little bit of testing to kind of dial in the, the right the right numbers here. It would really help it penetrate kind of some of these uh, weak spots, actually. So it'll help you penetrate lower plates that are kind of angling away from you. And it'll also be more reliable at penetrating those uh, cupola weak spots that are donut shaped. So that'll help get those uh, a little easier to pen. And I'd also consider bumping its uh, auto ricochet angle up to 75 degrees. So this will give you a little bit better chance to get through uh, well angled but thin armor. The idea is that if I'm switching to an AP round and, and aiming at, uh, you know, a well angled tank that's moving quickly, uh, if I can manage to hit it, uh, I'm more likely to maybe get a pen here. Uh, with a slower round. Now if we look at the APCR round here, uh, the idea is that it's a really hard shell that moves at incredible speed. It's that it kind of sacrifices normalization and it has the lowest auto ricochet angle to obtain this massive speed. So since we've already adjusted the AP round, I really don't think there's too much to change here with the APCR round. This round also does suffer uh, a little bit more penetration drop off in the AP round at high ranges because of its extreme velocity. So last up, we've got the heat round here. I picture this as a round that moves noticeably slower than your AP shell. I wouldn't actually change any of the characteristics of the heat round. What I would do is I'd go through all of the heat rounds in the game and look at their velocity. And I'd wanna make sure that the velocity on the heat round is noticeably lower than the AP round. I wanna make sure that players are making conscious decisions when shooting uh, moving targets at range. If it's a higher armored target, maybe use your heat round which may be a little bit more difficult to hit but more likely to pen or if it's a fast moving tank make sure you use a higher velocity shell so that you can hit that a little bit easier and when it comes to your he and your hash and your hep rounds i think this is a, in a good place the way that it is So up until now, we've only adjusted each shell's characteristics to give it a more defined role. Really, there is even more opportunity here to make each shell a little bit more different. So one of the knobs that we can turn is RNG. And by using RNG, we can really make each round feel a little bit more unique within its own role. Okay, so the first knob in RNG that we can turn is reducing the range. So instead of 25%, we could make it plus or minus 20% or plus or minus 15%. So basically you would start with these bell curves that had quite a bit of overlap in terms of damage and penetration. And by reducing the RNG, what you would do is you would tighten up that bell curve so that there would be less overlap between the shells, making each shell a little bit different than the other shells. So another thing that you can do, if you don't wanna change the 25% range, what you could do is change the distribution within that bell curve. So right now you have accuracy, you have damage, and you have penetration all described by a two sigma bell curve. What you could do is leave the range as wide as it is, but tighten that up to more like 1.5 or 1.0 sigma. So your distribution is a lot closer to the average that you're saying your shell is. So if your shell is averaging 400 alpha, you'll be more likely to hit, you know, closer to that average than further away from it. But you still maintain that plus or minus 25%.
And lastly, I'd really like to point out that you can mix and match both of these within different shell types. If you want your APCR to be more accurate, you could change the sigma on that. Or if you want to make sure that your AP round does more damage all the time, you could then tighten up that RNG spread to maybe plus or minus 20%. Really, you can go wild and make each round very, very unique by just changing the RNG factor of each round. So with the changes that I proposed, I think we've successfully achieved our two goals, which was to remove the cost as the main balancing factor of special ammunition. And we've also made ammunition selection a lot more meaningful by making them more unique to each other. So I think we can all agree that Wargaming has uh, some pretty massive changes in mind. I really hope that they address the cost of special ammunition here. And I think there's real opportunity to make the game a lot more interesting. But I will say I don't envy what's in front of them. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt and uh, let's hope they keep working to make the game better. All right. Well, I hope you guys found this video to be uh, reasonably well put together. Good logical thought process and uh, really getting to the root of the problems and some of the choices we have in making it uh, better for the game. Well, I guess I'll catch you in my next video where I tell Wargaming what the problem of premium tanks is and how to fix it. Uh, but until then, I'll uh, catch you on the battlefield. Take it easy, guys.